Uh, 2020, yeah, probably a year that I think most people would like to forget, really. Um, sooner it's over, the better. Um, obviously, started out, yeah, the bushfires in January was, yeah, pretty savage. Um, yeah, that was, you know, first probably three months of 2020 were struggle for everybody, myself in particular, losing houses, farm, pretty much everything I owned. an island being invaded from within. Flames are roaring and at times twisting through the bush landscape as the CFS proves no match for the cruelest of conditions. That morning um, I went out in my fire uniform, the same as I've done for the last two weeks, packed my bag, packed my lunch, okay we're going to fight fires again today. All day the winds got stronger, the heat got more intense, that fire became, yeah, just something that you can't explain. We couldn't get across any roads, there was no access to get home or doing. We had to just sit and wait. We basically raced back towards town at midnight and I said, I've got to go find my dogs if they're alive because they were still chained up with the seven puppies. So we drove into the driveway, the trees were on fire, glowing red. I drove in, I saw my house behind us on the ground. I thought, I thought the dogs had no hope they were going to be gone for sure. And then I just saw the chain start rattling and the brown dog socks, my 10 year old Kelpie, just popped her head up and I unclipped her chain, she jumped into the fire truck. So I went to where the other dog was, Lucy, she was in her kennel. I unchained her and out of the seven puppies, I found three puppies that night, threw them in the fire truck. Um, from there I went to the shed behind my house where my garlic is stored, that was still all intact. Straight away I went into positive mode saying, that's what I've got left. My dogs are alive, my shed's there, I've got my garlic, that's, that's where my life begins again. After seeing my life being destroyed, around me, um, that's where my life begins again. So. What was your first I'm going to stop for a minute. <laughs> Start thinking about that again and just go, wow. <laughs> Had a beautiful big veranda um, and decking out the front. Uh, there's the remnants of my deadly treadly. The wildlife and the birds would be just everywhere. The water was flowing, trickling little creeks running through here, um, which will obviously come back in time, which will be fine, but just not very pretty to look at. Now that it's looking at what's in front of me and trying to focus on what needs to be done. What are the priorities? Um, the last two weeks have just been pretty intense, seven days a week, just working with the garlic thinking about rebuilding a house, rebuilding my farm. It hasn't, I haven't had enough time yet to sit down um, and really focus on those things, which will be important in the longer term. In the short term, they're not as important for, for me. So this is um, where we're living now. Someone's you know, graciously donated the caravan to me, which I'm very appreciative of. Uh, I went and bought some fake lawn to give myself a bit of a homely feel. This is sort of dining table come office. Uh, sitting out in the nice, beautiful breeze. It's probably about 10 degrees at the moment, freezing cold. Yeah, no washing machines. Yeah, got a little porta potty toilet, which had to be emptied every two days. Try, trying to run an office. Eventually, I bought a laptop computer and a, a printer so I can print off orders. That's all sitting on my kitchen table in my caravan, so. I have a vision of what I'm gonna do. When eventually, in hopefully a few weeks time, the house will be cleared the land, you know, I have a nice blank canvas to design a home, to rebuild a house that I want to build. There's a lot bigger picture of a lot more needy people, I believe, out there. So the focus hasn't been on rebuilding a house. The amount of builders and things like that on the island is just not uh, viable that it's going to happen in the next two months, three months, six months. The focus is on my garlic business.
probably a month after you guys were here, the, the cleanup finally happened. And that was a very quick process, only took a couple of days. But just a very big relief to not look at the destruction that was there. Three weeks after the fires went through, I was contacted by LiftLink, Rapid Relief Housing Company in, based in Sydney. Over a period of a month, we got organised. Uh, by the end of March, Kevin came down and started the construction. Um, in about eight weeks, we got the house all up and running. Last weekend, we moved into the house, um, which is yeah, just a beautiful feeling. So come on in. It's a small 60 square metre area, but cosy and comfy. Uh, as we move down, we've got a nice sliding door, a nice little bathroom, two bedrooms. The builder that I'll use a friend of mine, um, Cookle Building Contracting. We spoke last weekend about it and I said, look, let's set a time for 18 months to see if we can rebuild the house that I want to live in. Now that I have this you know, two bedroom house to live in, I'm a lot more relaxed about that to say, okay, we can actually plan uh, a home. You know, it's a long time, 18 months, not to have, well, it's gonna be two years from when the fire went through January the 3rd. We're basically looking at two years. It's a two year plan to get back into a house. That's probably my mental health has been good because I've been so busy with readjusting everything in our lives that I haven't had time to sit there and think about, well, what happened? The garlic's in the ground. Um, I'm in a house where I feel comfortable, warm, you know, safe in my own environment now that I can just function. Um, the biggest hurdle was probably the banks. I insured through an insurance company, bought assessors out, they approved, no worries at all, they were willing to pay out. Um, they rang me and said, yep, we just need a letter from your bank. But then the bank turned to me and said, no, because you have a small mortgage left on your house, we're not gonna pay you the money. We're going to hold that money until you employ a builder or start that process. And as that process gets done, we'll release money accordingly to get your house rebuilt. And I, that, that mentally, that hurt me in a big, big way. I told them I was going to go onto TV and explain the situation. And yeah, by some miracle, the money turned up in my bank account. You know, after the fires, lived in the caravan. That was never going to be an option as a permanent thing. That was very, very short term, which I realised after the first probably two weeks. So to get onto building the new little house, we've got a little um, two bedroom house. It's very comfortable. Initially, I thought, right, that'll do me for 12 months. And then we've got to seriously think about rebuilding my home. But as we've lived here over the last you know, six or seven months now, this the small house now actually feels like a home. So. I'll be just quite happy living here for the next couple of years and we'll slowly, the rebuild will become over time rather than getting forced into it because I need somewhere to live. Yeah, after the devastation in January, the first thing I looked at was the garlic surviving and this business of mine, the garlic business, has to be the hero of my life now. So it took a while to actually sink in what had actually happened. Um, not only to me, but to everyone in the community really. But last 12 months, I've Everybody helping everybody, everyone just getting through just shows how, you know, the good heart of people in the community and even right across Australia, really. So.